Yo, Adam Saxon with the Power BI Cat Team, and I have got a special treat for you. It's another month, and we've got another Power BI desktop update. This is the May 2018 release, and we're gonna dig in what's inside. Let's go. You may be asking where Amanda is. She has asked me to do a guest spot for this month's release. And I get really excited about every month when Power BI Desktop comes up because there's so many good things inside of it. And I wanna walk through that, share that with you, and we're gonna find out what it is. As we go through this, be sure to let, let us know down in the comments below, what's your favorite item out of this month? We're very curious. And or was there something you were hoping for that we didn't see? We always love feedback as well. With that, let's go dig into the items that are in this month's release. And before we do that, I do need to put on my glasses. Sorry about that. First up on the list is an update to conditional formatting. So the way it used to work is we could set background colors on items or you know just adjust colors. And it was based off of the field that we had in there and whatever aggregation type was going on in there. So let's take a look at what we can do now. So what I've got is in this table, we've got sales amount and sales amount itself right now is being based on sum. But what I can do is if I go into conditional formatting and we look at the background color scales, in here we're actually setting the color based on average, not on sum. So we're displaying sum, but we're doing the conditional formatting based on average. So it gives you a little more flexibility. That's nice. Not only that, but we can take this to the next level. We like doing that, right? Let's always go to the next level. So I can do this on text now too. So I've got coloring format on the text. And because I can use a different field for the conditional formatting based on what's being displayed, I can do this in a lot of different places. So in the same table, I've got product name. This is the product name is the text that's being displayed. But if I come down to conditional formatting and go to font color scales, the actual coloring is, be, is based on the average of NSAT. Pretty cool. Next up on the list is an improvement to the way that drill through works. So when this was first introduced, you used categorical fields that could be listed as a drill through field on a detail page report. Then when you go to your overview page and you select a chart that has that same field, you can drill through into the detail page and it'll make that relationship for you. So the improvement here is that we can now use measures for that drill through. So we can list measures uh, in the drill through items as well as categorical fields. There is another item that I will show you in a second as well that's really cool. So let's let's dig in so I can show you what's going on here. So from a given from my scatter plot, I'm going to select on the deluxe class item. And what I'm going to do here is right click in my bar chart, go to drill through, and then go to the details page. Awesome, I'm now drilled through on the details page and you can see that sales amount was part of the drill through. And the other item that's included in this is the ability to pass filters as part of that drill through action, which is awesome. So the caveats on this is you can toggle whether or not we're gonna pass those filters, whether it's on or off, if you're using categorical fields. If you're including a measure, it will always be on and we will always pass the filters because we need filter context when we're doing that. And so we can see here, I selected in that scatter chart, I selected deluxe for class and we can see that as part of the drill through items that it's being filtered on that item. So awesome, give it a try. Sync slicers got an update as well. And the idea here is that we can group slicers together and what this does for us is it allows us to do some interesting comparisons between the same slicer type that we wouldn't have ordinarily been able to do. For example, if we take a look at my average sale amount by class, what I wanna do is I have net satisfaction right now defined as one to three on the slicer. And I want to compare, let's say my deluxe class that is also at a different value. So I wanna see what the one to three detail is when I drill in, but I also wanna see what that would look like for other values as well. So if I right click on deluxe, let's go to drill through. Remember right now, net satisfaction is one to three. We're gonna to go to my satisfaction comparison page. On the left here, the net satisfaction slicer is the one that is grouped with the slicer on the overview page, right? So those two are grouped together. On the right, I've got another net satisfaction slicer that is on its own. So I can use different values in this item, which is very cool. And the way we can set this up is if we select the given slicer, underneath, uh, I'm gonna show the sync slicers pane, 
And then within the sync slicer pane, if I expand advanced options for this slicer, I can put it in a group, right? So I've labeled it as NSAT and I'm gonna sync the items between whatever's in that group. So if we go back to the overview page, we'll see also that the net satisfaction slicer there is also in my NSAT group. And so those two are synced together, whereas my other NSAT or my other net satisfaction slicer is not grouped. So I can have a completely independent value for that. Another thing that's part of this, and I don't have a good example for you, is the ability to actually sync items from different fields. So the example that Amanda shared with me is that we could have date, different date fields that are there, and those values could sync between the two different slicers, even though they're from different fields, if they're in the same group. So that's pretty cool. Next up is log access improvements. Instead of explaining it, let's look at it real quick. So I've got a chart here that is sales amount by class. And so if we look at this and I go to the uh, paintbrush, and then we go down under Y axis, I can change my scale type from linear to log. And when I do that, the improvement here is you're gonna get what you expect, right? And there's improvements to how errors are occurring or like how we're handling and displaying errors. And so it's gonna be a better experience than what you've had before. So if you're using this feature or if you stopped using the feature, give it another try. You may like it. We threw a little love to funnel charts and data labels if you're using those. So let's look at what we've got here. If I select my funnel chart and I come over to the paintbrush, go under data labels. Before, from a label style perspective, all we had was a data value, but now we've given you a bunch more options there. So it gives you a little more flexibility if you are actually using data labels with inside of a funnel chart. So there you go. The next update has to do with the stroke or the width of a line in a chart. And this one actually has a very cool story for it. We've had this feature before and you could set it from one to whatever value. And there was a comment in last month's release that someone asked, well, why can't we just set it to zero? And so now you can. Based on that comment, we went in real quick, made that change, and now you can set the line width to zero. So let's look at that. So if I select my chart here, you can see that I've got like some markers here. It almost looks like a little dot plot. That's actually a line chart. And so when we go to the paintbrush and we go under shapes, I can now set my stroke width to zero. The catch here is you have to make sure your marker is set. Otherwise, nothing's gonna show up, right? Because the line's gonna be invisible. So if you have your marker set, set your line width to zero. Now you can have little dots on your charts. We've got a big feature in this month's version of Power BI Desktop, and that is incremental refresh. This has been talked about for a little while. We announced it back when Premium first came out. This is a, pre tie a feature tied to Premium. And so the idea here is, the way it works today, is if I go to refresh data inside the service, it's an all or nothing thing, right? And so I'm gonna have to refresh the entire data model. And if that's a really big data model, I can get up to 10 gigs on a P3, then that could take a while. So the idea of incremental refresh is I only wanna update a segment of that. I've already got all the data from before, so just focus on the most recent data and or items that have possibly changed, right? So. Let's take a quick look at this. This is not an exhaustive look at incremental refresh. We will have more content that comes out, uh, some additional videos and some documentation that will come out to really explain the full feature of this. But let's look at it just from a Power BI desktop perspective. So inside a Power BI desktop, and I'm using a different sample file from the other items, the first thing I have to do is I have to go set up two parameters that are gonna be in my system. So. I need to set up range start and range end, and these have to be date time fields uh, from a data type perspective. Once those parameters are set up, then what we can do is on the table that we want to do incremental refresh on, all I have to do is right click on that table. We can go to incremental refresh, and then from here we can define the rules that are gonna be in place for that incremental refresh. So we've got the table name, we're gonna say, yep, we're gonna turn on incremental refresh for that. And then we're gonna store rows in the last amount of days and then refresh rows in the last amount of days for this given table. So you can equate this to like partitions and analysis services. It's the same concept, but we can do this now inside of Power BI. So I. If you've got premium and you've been looking forward to this feature, definitely check it out and let us know what you think.
We have a few new custom visuals that are now available for you to use. The first of these is Collage by Cloudscope. And the idea behind this is that it's kind of like a collage of images, right? And you can actually add other fields in addition to the image URL and you can get a detail view, which makes it look a little bit like Instagram. So you can add that into your reports. The other custom visual is a Chinese color map. And so if you live in China and you wanna get accurate representation of borders, you may wanna check out this map for you with inside of your reports to make sure it looks right. All right, so let's talk about the update for pulling data from web. So this is a connector that's available for you. You've been able to use this for a while, but we've got an awesome improvement to it. And I'm really excited to show this to you. The example I'm gonna use, the web page I'm gonna do, I hear that Will Thompson loves country music, so let's go get the top 100 country songs from Billboard charts. All right, so we've got this. I'm gonna grab the URL, absolutely ping Will Thompson on what his favorite country song is. And we're gonna to go to get data, we're gonna to go to, we're gonna to go to web. This is a preview feature, so be sure you check that preview feature. Make sure you turn it on. We're gonna go put in the URL. All right, it comes up. This is the normal from web experience that we've had. We'll see the document here. The thing to note is if I go back to the web page, you can see this is not like a standard table, right? This is a weird formatted thing that we're gonna try and go grab. And so if we go back in here, we'll see that it's not really pulling it out. And even if I go to web view, it's not gonna really show me a whole lot. So to get to the new from web item, go down to the bottom, there's an extract table using examples. So we can click on that. All right, it pulled up the page. If I scroll down here, I can see that those items are listed there. So let me grab the number one here. I will do an example here. So meant to be, and then boom, there's all the song titles. All right, let's add another column in here. All right, so I've got the artist listed here. I'm gonna hit enter and boom, it grabs all of the artist along with it. Again, this wasn't a normal table, but I'm crafting it into a standard table that we would all know and love. And so this is great. We can do from example items for from web. That's awesome. So be sure to play with that. Remember it's a preview feature, so there's still gonna be improvements to it and we would love to hear your feedback on it. We also had a few other connector updates in this release. I'm just gonna read the list because there's a couple of them and I don't have them memorized. We've got the common data service for app connectors. We've got the Azure Custo DB connector and we've got the Google BigQuery and Azure HD Insight Spark connectors are both generally available. For the Adobe Analytics connector, there is actually support now for multiple domain logins. There is an item you're gonna have to go check to enable this feature though, within the preview area. The Visual Studio Team Services connector has an update now for analytics views. There's actually a blog going into what all of this is, we'll have that link down in the description below. The OLEDB connector now supports alternate Windows credentials, so you can supply those if you like. The SAP BW Direct Query connector also had an update to improve technical name support. We've got some improvements to add column from examples, and the improvement here is that you can do some pretty complex stuff now. The idea here is that if I wanna do some complex formatting based on multiple columns, I can do that. For example, if I wanna take first name, maybe I've got initial I wanna put in there, and maybe I wanna combine that with job title, I can mix all that together and format it and maybe put job title in parentheses, for example. Hey from example. So if you're using add column from example, be sure to check out this feature. I would also be remiss if I didn't give a plug for the upcoming data in, I mean, business application summit that's coming up in July. So be sure to register for that and come hang out with us at that conference. We would love to meet you and get more feedback from you. We've got a link down in the description below for more information about the business application summit. So you can check that out. We've also by popular demand, got the sample file that you saw in this demo, the main sample file, not the incremental refresh one. We'll have other information out on that, but the main sample file that you saw in this video, it's out on GitHub for you to go grab. Links for that are down in the description as well. All right, favorite feature of this month's Power BI desktop release. For me, incremental refresh, hands down. From web is a close, close second. I hear Amanda likes the new conditional formatting things because she loves to control the pretty. 
And so that's her favorite. But I wanna pass this off to you. What's your favorite item? Go and leave that down in the comments below and let us know. And who knows, maybe some feedback that you'll get in there will help in another version of Power BI Desktop, just like the line chart with happened. All right, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the Power BI YouTube channel for more great content. Thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.